With the recent rise of many ARPGs and games with similar themes, a lot of people have been overwhelmed and downright upturned at the idea of adding another game to their roster. So, even though I'm absolutely biased, no doubt, I'm here today to answer the question, is Withering Waves worth giving a try? This video is merely to give you an insight of Withering Waves compared to already existing and established titles. It does not include all details, as I don't want to sit here for two hours gushing over the game. I will leave a lot of things out on purpose, so if there's any other aspects you would like to touch on, leave them in the comments below. So without further ado, what is Withering Waves? Withering Waves is an open-world ARPG made by Kuro Games, the developers of Punishing Grey Raven. Starting development at around 2020, with first sightings at around Spring 2021, and the first beta and April of 2023, it didn't exactly hype people up. Well, yes, it was an ARPG, something people who were sitting at home because of, you know what, during the time, and just generally fans of the genre would heavily enjoy, the graphics left much to be desired, especially in comparison to other games on the rise during that time. And with the criticism of fans and bystanders, the devs picked up and left. I'm kidding. They were just radio silent for around 10 months. After that, the game was almost unrecognizable. The models looked more refined, the graphics looked like they would like to make my PC explode, and the game was generally perceived way better. While the localization was and is still something to be worked on, the game looked promising in a lot of aspects. And with a few NDA tests there and there, and a big second beta test in the middle of February 2024, it got a lot of people talking, causing the small fan base the game had at the time to expand exponentially. As of the time of this recording, for example, the pre-registration said around 23 million. So why should you play? The question of why you should honestly depends on you. Whether you like exploration, collecting characters, the story and lore of the world, or complex combat, Withering Ways honestly has it all. The world building is beautiful, with diverse areas which are all special in their own right, and I might get back to making a whole video just how beautiful this is. The environment is packed with foliage, but besides that, the game has unique shaders for the time of day as well as when it's raining, which can we just appreciate this? The many particles on the screen, however, do not overpower the combat, as the characters all have their own heavily diverse attacks packed with power and impact. While a lot of players might be used to, I hit and I do big PP damage, Withering Wave seems to focus more on fuck around and find out, with more dodge and combo mechanics than I can count. You sometimes really have to pay close attention as to what you're doing, as while it's not too fast paced, hack and slashing just won't cut it. Talking about the characters, for 1.0, there's quite a handful to choose from. See, we got, uh, Dilf, uh, Dragon Man, Mommy, Childhood Friend type, and more. Aside from the characters, the enemies and monsters are also quite diverse. Separated into echoes and tacit discords, there's tons of designs that range from cute little guys to my sleep paralysis demon. That said, I've only been praising this game the entire time. If you've been on TikTok or Twitter at all the past two months, you've probably seen the discussions between the Boa fandom and some other well-established fandoms on said platform. So why the hate? In my humble opinion, as some of that kind of stands in between the fandoms, being clinically insane enough to have played most of them since release date, some fans are just scared to try something new. Sure, everyone has their fave, no one likes their favorite thing getting competition and will most likely defend it even though, in the end, it doesn't really matter. You may even like what you see here, but even the slight of someone else calling it the end of your favorite game will make you want to convince yourself you hate it. But no game will die just because another releases. Even as a diehard fan, you will get burnt out at some point, so having multiple games to play just gives you a more diverse experience. That said, while I love Withering Waves, it has its issue like any other game. The combat is hard if you're not used to it. For example, Genshin Impact's combat is easy and inviting. Most of the time, frame or ult dodging is the most you have to do besides hack and slashing, at least from my experience. More often than not, being easy to get into is a huge factor of a successful game, as button mashers like myself, and yes, I'm outing myself here, often struggle for a while to get combos down. Secondly, the graphics are gorgeous, but 
they also limit some players from accessing it at first. While I trust they'll work on optimization once we're a few months in, I see many games only growing little by little due to laptop or hot potato phone gamers being easily forgotten. Thirdly, the localization. Career Games is a Chinese company, and while I'm not saying the Asian dumps are their main focus, that's exactly what I'm saying. The Chinese dub sounds great, the JP dub is building their stacked roster, and the Korean dub also doesn't sound all too bad. But the English? While I don't want to call any names, some voice acting is just awkward and off-character. So, should you play? In my opinion, it's worth giving it a try. I've been following the game since the first beta, so I'm absolutely biased, but it's a new open world game to breathe some fresh air into the ARPG market. I myself never got into Punishing Grey Raven, as I got into it way too late, so with WooWa literally releasing in less than a month, I think it's the perfect time to at least trial it. After all, you can always just hit the uninstall button if you're not too into it. Wait for a while and try again once there's more content in it. If you're still not convinced, your device can't handle the game, or you just don't have enough safe space, why not watch some streamers play it first? I, for my part, will be streaming on release on the 23rd of May, as well as the days following here on YouTube and Twitch. If you're interested, why not subscribe to be notified when I stream? Watch me die to probably the easiest enemies in the game. <laughs> Either way, my answer to the question is yes, you should. Even if it's not your cup of tea, you can at least say I tried. God, this sounds like a motivational post. You can at least say you tried. <laughs> Anyways, that was my piece on the matter. Thank you very much for watching and see you soon.